okay, this is problem seven. And on problem seven, it says if x is less than zero, in other words, for negative values of x, then the absolute value of 2x to the fifth minus 3 is equivalent to what expression that contains no absolute value signs? Well, let's take a look at this problem. And uh, we're talking about values that are less than zero, in other words, negative values. If you plug a negative value in for x here, a negative raised to the fifth power is a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. Five negatives multiplied together gives you a negative. And a negative times two is a still a negative. And the absolute value will change that sign then to a positive. So what does the absolute value do? Well, it changes the sign for values that are less than zero. In other words, we're going to get the opposite of this answer. And the way to represent that is to say the opposite or the negative of 2x to the fifth minus 3. And that would be the answer to that problem. Um, on problem 8, it says that there's a circle centered at the origin. Well, that's the coordinate 0, 0. And there's a point on the circle at uh, 5, 2. So here's the point on the circle right here at 5, 2, which is 5 to the right and 2 up high. And here would be the radius of that circle. Well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which says that the uh, two short sides of the triangle, if we square each of those, that equals the square of the hypotenuse. So 5 squared plus 2 squared equals the radius squared. Right here is the radius, this diagonal here. 5 squared is 25 plus 4 makes 29, so r squared equals 29. So uh, take the square root of both sides, and you'll get r equals uh, the square root of 29. And that would be the answer to that problem. On problem number nine, it says f of x equals 2x squared minus 1, and g of x equals 2x squared plus 3. What is f of g of x? Well, f of g of x means take this g of x function and substitute it into x on the f function. And if we do that, we would get 2 times what's x? This stuff, 2x squared plus 3. That then gets squared, then finish it off, minus 1. Now, 2x squared plus 3 squared means 2x squared plus 3 times another 2x squared plus 3. So we have to foil this stuff together. 2x squared times 2x squared is 4x to the fourth. 2x squared times 3 is 6x squared. 3 times 2x squared is another 6x squared. And 3 times 3 is 9. And then we'll have to add 1 at the end. Just bringing that down. Sorry, they subtract 1 right there. Okay, now combining uh, like terms, the 6x squared and 6x squared is 12x squared. Now, taking this 2 through, we'll get 8x to the 4th, 24x squared, and that will be plus 18 minus that 1 makes plus 17. And that would be the answer to that problem. On well, problem number 10, it's a trig question, and either you're going to know it or, or not know it. And uh, uh, it says, what is 1 over secant theta equal to? Well, if you have trig... Uh, you'll, you would know the, the fact that 1 over the cosine theta is equal to secant theta. So therefore, if you have 1 over the co secant theta, that's equal to cosine theta. And that's the answer to 10. And I'll get a new sheet of paper to do uh, start at problem 11. Okay, problem 11 says a line L goes through the points 1, negative 2, and 3, negative 4. If another line, now first we're going to have to get a, the equation of that line that goes through those two points. And it says if another line has slope negative 2 and it's drawn through the origin, okay, we'll need to get that equation. It will intersect at uh, line L at the point TP. So then we have to find that their point of intersection. And then it says what is the value of T minus P. So we need to get two equations of lines and find their point of intersection. So let's go ahead and do that. The one point is 1, negative 2. The other one is 3, negative 4. We want to put that into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So first, we've got to get the slope, m. To get the slope, use the equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, the rise over the run. I call it the first point x1, y1, and the second point x2, y2. Subtracting off the y's, it would be negative 4 minus y1, which is a negative 2, over x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is 1. Negative 4 minus a minus 2 is negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. So that's the slope. Now, use that slope in one of the points, it doesn't matter which one, to put in the point-slope formula. Here's the point-slope formula. And substituting those in, we would get y equals m, which is negative 1, times quantity x minus x1, which is 1 plus y1, 
Well, y1 is negative 2, so minus 2. Simplifying this, taking the negative 1 through, we would get y equals negative 1 times x, or negative x. And negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So y equals negative x minus 1. So that's the first line. Another line has slope of negative 2 and goes through the origin. The origin is the coordinate 0, 0. So the y-intercept is 0 and the slope is negative 2. Substituting negative 2 in for m and 0 in for the y-intercept, it would just be y equals negative 2x. So now we've got to find out where these two lines intersect. Well, if y here equals negative x plus 1 and y equals negative 2x, then we can set what y is equal to on both of these equal to each other. We can set a negative x uh, minus 1, the first thing that y is equal to, equal to the second thing that y is equal to, negative 2x. Now I added 2x to both sides, negative x plus 2x is x, and I added 1 to both sides to get x equals 1. That's the x value, so if it says uh, what was the t value of it, it would be 1. But it asks the t and the p on this, so we have to substitute this back in, substitute 1 in for x, and to either one of these, like if I substitute 1 into here, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Or if I substitute 1 into here, it would be the negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. So the point of intersection is the point 1, negative 2. So that's my t and my p. My t is 1, my p is negative 2. What is t minus p? Well, that's what the problem finally asks. And that's 1 minus p, which is a negative 2, and 1 minus a negative 2 is 1 plus 2, which is 3, and that's the answer to that problem. So that's doing a lot of algebra in one problem right there. Okay, 12 is composition of function. It says if f of x equals 2 over 5x squared and g of x equals 2x squared, what is g of f of x? Well, in other words, I've got to put this f of x function right here into the g function where the x is. So it would be 2 times that f of x function, okay, because I'm substituting that in for dx, so it'll be 2 times this quantity, 2 over 5x squared, and then that gets squared. So 2 squared is 4 times the 2 is 8, and on the bottom square in that would be 25x to the fourth. Okay, 13 says what is the sum of the solutions of this absolute value equation? Well, if you have an absolute value isolated and that equals a positive number, then you get two equations from that. One, 2x minus 5 equals 6, and the other one drops the absolute value and is equal to the negative number over here. So it would be 2x minus 5 equals negative 6. Solve both of these and add them together. Add 5 and you get 2x equals 11. Divide by 2 and you get 11 halves. Solve this one, add 5, you get negative 1, divide by 2, you get negative 1 half. Then it says, what is the sum of the solutions? So we need to add these two together. 11 halves minus 1 half is 10 halves, or 5. And we'll stop this video at this point, and we'll pick it up on problem 14 on the next video.